So kamayata medyam maidang siya at manvyanen siya miti tatoshva samabhavat yadashvat tanmedyam abhuditi tadevash medhasyashva medhyatvam Eshahava ashramedham veda ya enamevam veda Tamana varudhyai vamanan yata Tang sangvatsarasya paratadatmana alabhata Hashun devatabhya pratyauhat Tasmat Sarva devityam prokshitam prajapatyamalabhanta Eshahava ashvamedhoya eshatapati Tasya sangvatsara atma Ayam agnirarkaha Tasye me loka atmanaha Tabita Varkash for Medho. So Punare Kaiva Devata Bhavati Mrityureva. Apa Punar Mrityum Jayati. Nainam Mrityurap Noti. Mrityurasyatma Bhavati. Eta Sang Devata Nameko Bhavati. Text 7. He desired, let this body of mine be fit for a sacrifice, and let me be embodied through this, and entered it. Because that body swelled, Ashvat, therefore it came to be called Ashva, horse. And because it became fit for a sacrifice, therefore the horse sacrifice came to be known as Ashvamedha. He who knows it thus indeed knows the horse sacrifice. Imagining himself as the horse and letting it remain free, he reflected on it. After a year, he sacrificed it to himself and dispatched the other animals to the gods. Therefore, priests to this day sacrifice to Prajapati, the sanctified horse that is dedicated to all the gods. He who shines yonder is the horse sacrifice. His body is the year. This fire is Arka. Its limbs are these worlds. So these two, fire and the sun, are Arka and the horse sacrifice. These two again become the same God, death. He who knows this conquers further death. Death cannot overtake him. It becomes his self, and he becomes one with these deities. What did he, Hiranyagarbha, do with his mind attached to that body? He desired. How? Let this body of mine be fit for a sacrifice, and let me be embodied through this. And he entered it, because that body bereft in his absence of its reputation and strength, swelled, Ashvat. Therefore it came to be called Ashva, horse. Hence, Prajapati himself is named Ashva. This is a eulogy on the horse. And because, on account of his entering it, the body, although it had become unfit for a sacrifice by having lost its reputation and strength, again became fit for a sacrifice. Therefore, the horse sacrifice came to be known as Ashvamedha. For a sacrifice consists of an action, its factors, and its results. And that it is no other than Prajapati is a tribute to the sacrifice. The horse that is a factor of the sacrifice has been declared to be Prajapati in the passage the head of the sacrificial horse is the dawn, etc. Mantra 111. 1, 1. 
the present paragraph is introduced to enjoin a collective meditation on that sacrificial horse, which is Prajapati, and the sacrificial fire, which has already been described as such, viewing both as the result of the sacrifice. That this is the import of this section we understand from the fact that in the previous section no verb denoting an injunction has been used, and one such is necessary. The words, he who knows it thus indeed knows the horse sacrifice, mean, he only and none else knows the horse sacrifice, who knows the horse and the arca or fire described above as possessed of the features to be presently mentioned, which are here shown collectively. Therefore, one must know the horse sacrifice thus. This is the meaning. How? First, the meditation on the animal is being described. Prajapati, desiring to sacrifice again with the great sacrifice, imagined himself as the sacrificial animal, and letting it, the consecrated animal, remain free or unbridled, reflected on it. After a complete year, he sacrificed it to himself, that is, as dedicated to Prajapati, Hiranyagarbha, and dispatched the other animals, domestic and wild, to the gods, their respective deities. And because Prajapati reflected like this, therefore others also should likewise fancy themselves, in the manner described above, as the sacrificial horse, and meditate, while being sanctified with the mantras, I am dedicated to all the gods, but while being killed, I am dedicated to myself. The other animals, domestic and wild, are sacrificed to their respective deities, the other gods, who are but a part of myself. Therefore, priests to this day similarly sacrifice to Prajapati the sanctified horse that is dedicated to all the gods. He who shines yonder is the horse sacrifice. The sacrifice which is thus performed with the help of the animal is being directly represented as the result. Who is he? The sun who illumines the universe with his light. His body, the body of the sun, who is the result of the sacrifice, is the year, that period of time. The year is called his body as it is made by him. Now, since the sun as the horse sacrifice, is performed with the help of fire. The latter also is the sun. Here the result of the sacrifice is being mentioned as the sacrifice itself. This terrestrial fire is arca, the accessory of the sacrifice. Its limbs, the limbs of this arca, the fire that is kindled at the sacrifice, are these three worlds. So it has been explained in the passage, his head is the east, etc. Mantra one, two, three. So these two, fire and the sun, are Arka and the horse sacrifice as described above, the sacrifice and its result respectively. Arka, the terrestrial fire, is directly the sacrifice, which is right. Since the latter is performed with the help of fire, it is here represented as fire, and the result is achieved through the performance of the sacrifice. Hence, it is represented as the sacrifice in the statement that the sun is the horse sacrifice. These two, fire and the sun, the means and the end, the sacrifice and its result, again become the same God. Who is it? Death. There was but one deity before, who later was divided into action, its means, and its end. So it has been said, he differentiated himself in three ways. Mantra 1, 2, 3. And after the ceremony is over, he again becomes one deity, death, the result of the ceremony. He who knows this one deity, horse sacrifice or death, as I alone am death, the horse sacrifice, 
and there is but one deity identical with myself and attainable through the horse and fire, conquers further death. That is, after dying once, he is not born to die anymore. Even though conquered, death may overtake him again. So it is said, death cannot overtake him. Why? Because it becomes his self, the self of one who knows thus. Further, being death, the result, he becomes one with these deities. This is the result such a knower attains, just through knowledge.